Hello friends and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Brandy and I am the owner of Boundless Treasures Boutique. Today we're going to dive into this rhinestone tumbler. So sit back, enjoy, and don't forget to like and subscribe. To start, I started with a sanded and prepped tumbler. It is a 20 ounce from Craft Haven. I started with my rhinestones, which I got from Be Createful. They are all size SS16 or four millimeters. I have two bags of flatback luminous opal pink, one bag of flatback foil jet, and two bags of flatback foil dream moonlight. The adhesive I'm using is E6000, and I have a jewel picker here, which I got from Amazon. Now, I am using the Bling Queen 2.0 from the Bowen. This was a life saver, um, so I'll be sure to link that for you guys. Um, I got this pattern on Etsy, and I will make sure that I link the pattern as well. So the thing I want to tell you first is when you are doing the honeycomb method, which is the method we're going to be using for this pattern, it is super, super important that you have a straight base line. Um, so this is the first line of your entire cup. So you'll see here that as I'm going, I'm taking my cup off of my bling queen and I am tapping my rhinestones down along the edge. Uh, the reason this is so, so important, friends, is if you do not have a straight line here, the rest of your entire design is going to be entirely off. Um, so make sure that you do that. So what I did was I started with my first, and you'll see that I have a highlighter mark at my first rhinestone. That is so I know where to stop and start each and every single row that I am working on. From there, I make sure that all of my jewels are pressed down evenly and I use my table to do that. And this is just gonna make sure that I am not eyeballing it and everything is as accurate as it should be. I am also here counting the number of rhinestones that I should have on my first row in comparison to the number of rhinestones that were actually placed. Um, now, the second row is equally as important because again, this is what's going to get us into the rhythm of our tumbler and the pattern. Um, so from here, I am going in between the rhinestones that are in the top row. So you can see where there's like this middle portion I am just snuggling up my rhinestones into that area. Um, and this is how you create the honeycomb method. Um, I am working in small sections and you'll see as I go through this that I start to go more and more um, just because it was faster for me. But I did notice once I started to switch my colors up um, that I did have to pay a lot more attention um, and so I went back to smaller sections. Um, this cup in total took me probably about eight hours. Um, so I literally binge watched um, the originals and went to rhinestoning. Um, there were, like, I don't think I sat down for longer than hour increments. Um, so this is extremely sped up. If not, we would have been here for like, I think this showed me like 335 minutes. And I didn't think that you guys would want to sit here for that long. Uh, I definitely would not have sat there for that long. Um, but I did want to share all of my experiences that I went through while making this tumbler. Um, but before I get into my experiences, I just want to make sure that um, I let you all know um, this was super, super 
therapeutic for me for sure. Um, one thing that I did learn as I went is it is super important to have the correct spacing and number of stones. Um, if you don't, and you'll see throughout this um, where I had to push some in um, pretty aggressively, um, a big part of that started with my first row. Um, I spaced them super right next to each other. Um, and looking back and reading some of the um, information from um, other patterns, um, it does say to make sure that you may have a little bit of a, a small, small, teeny tiny gap um, in between on your first couple rows. This way the rest of your pattern flows nicely. Um, this particular pattern did not come with any type of instructions other than the size that I needed and the number of each stone that I, I needed. Um, so I found that super helpful. I will let you all know because I am going to be doing a another one here soon for a customer. This one was for me, so it worked out beautifully. Um, all the little happy accidents really didn't make that big of a difference, and I'm obsessed with my rhinestone cup. Um, but I will let you know how using those instructions go, but I would just be mindful of that. If you don't have instructions, maybe reach out to the creator who made the pattern, see if they have any recommendations or suggestions, um, because that would have been super, super helpful um, on this particular tumbler. Um, also, um, glue friends, holy smokes. Um, there were some sections where I was trying to get my glue out and it came out in big old glops. Um, if that happens, um, take the time. I did not. So learn from my mistakes so that you do not duplicate it. Um, but take the time and just kind of spread that out differently. You can use the silicone pins. Um, you can even grab some baby wipes and wipe up your glue, um, but that will be super, super beneficial because let me tell you, when I went back after this, um, I let the glue cure, um, I did have spots where I had to go in with like my tweezers to pull out the excess glue because it was super, super apparent. So just be mindful of that. Um, I will tell you there are a lot of different also adhesives I found. Um, I used one on a rhinestone tumbler that I had ordered like an entire kit from um, this same company, Be, Be Createful. And they have beautiful rhinestones, by the way. So definitely check them out. I'll be sure to link them. But um, I got a kit. So I wanted to play around. So I went with the 12 ounce. The glue that came with it I am not a fan of. I won't use that glue again. Um, but it may work out beautifully for a lot of other folks. Um, so I really, really loved the E6000. Um, it did have um, fumes, so make sure if you're sensitive to that or um, you're not in a well ventilated area that you have um, the PPE that you are going to need to just make sure that you're protecting yourself. Um, but the E6000 worked really, really great. Um, I've also seen some other creators using um, liquid fusion. I have not tried that myself. However, I do have some, and I am planning on trying to use it for my next one. So I will definitely let you know how that goes. Um, now, all of the rhinestones that are used, whether they're resin, jelly, or glass rhinestones, you want to make sure that they're flat backs. Um, and I would also recommend um, that you do not use hot fixed rhinestones. The hot fixed rhinestones will not adhere as well. Um, they will adhere, but not as well, and they won't last as long as just the regular flat backs. Um, I also did a lot of digging around just the plain rhinestones and AB, which stands for, um, um, oh my gosh, Arroya Boralis. So like the Northern Lights, um, that is just the reflection that it gives to make it extra sparkly. Um, it is a beautiful, beautiful finish and definitely 
um, one that if you haven't tried yet, I definitely recommend trying. But all of them are super, super beautiful. Um, you really can't go wrong. I did use glass rhinestones for this particular um, tumbler. I do have some jelly ones that I purchased for other orders that I have. Um, and I will let you know if I see a huge, huge difference, but looking at them in the packaging in comparison, um, I personally cannot tell a difference, but, um, like I said, I will definitely let you know in the next tutorial if, um, I prefer one over the other. Um, they all look equally beautiful and I will tell you that I'm sure that they create, um, beautiful, beautiful tumblers either way. Um, but now that we are getting close to the finish, I am in the home stretch. I think here I had like probably four or five more rows to go. I was like bound in a Sherman. Like I, my husband was trying to get us to get ready to go to dinner. And I was just like, wait, I just got to finish this. I just have to finish this. Um, and I was able to get it all done. I did have to pause step away before I finished it. But, um, this was the most gratifying part of it all. Um, what I will tell you is rhinestoning, it is time consuming. So make sure that when you're doing rhinestones or if you're doing cu cups for your customers that you're setting proper time frame expectations, um, unless you've just got, um, buku amounts of time, um, which I, I do not, but, um, here you'll see me finishing these in like a section, not row by row. Um, and this was just to make sure that my bottom was flush and that, um, I get like, I could see the finish line. Um, and it was like, it was so great because all that time that I had put in and all of the hours spent, um, had finally paid off. Um, once I finished, um, the glue recommendation is to let it cure for 72 hours. And then I washed it with Dawn dish soap. And this is the result. I am obsessed. I absolutely, absolutely love the way this cup turned out. Um, I'd love to know what you guys think. Um, so drop that in the comments below and I will see you guys next week. Thanks for tuning in.